add a little bit of CSS. It looks and listens for a VR context and then enables it to be, perhaps just the typography is, is, is better formatted. Perhaps it's horizontal, right. not vertical, you know? Right. I'll do a little quick kind of like high leverage moves that make it work better in VR, mm -hmm. even if it's not like optimized for VR. Or, or even like, like the content can still be the same, but like maybe the layout of it is more yeah. galaxy oriented. Exactly, yeah. right. Like, Responsive web design. There, there's, yeah, there's a huge uh, movement right now towards responsive layouts. Um, and, you know, making something that works between a laptop screen and a phone screen and your 30 inch monitor at your desk. And um, I, I kind of see VR as just being another access along that dimension where you're, you're creating content that, like, at its core, is the, it's the same content but presented in in a different visual style, different context as you move between devices. Because, you know, people's phones are not gonna go away anytime soon. And it's gonna be a long time before anybody feels comfortable, you know, spinning up a VR experience uh, in, you know, the, the line at the grocery store. Um, you know, we're, we're gonna have to have like sunglasses style, see-through AR before anybody even thinks about doing that. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna have to consider a world where we have to work in all of these different places. Yeah. VR is just going to be almost one more screen in that world. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing to consider is accessibility, and this is something that doesn't get nearly enough play mm -hmm. uh, from web devs right now. A blind person gives a shit about VR for yeah. the most mm -hmm. part. Like maybe great audio, you know, we we could definitely do that, but um, you know that all all the visuals in the world are not going to make a difference to this individual, right? But they still want to, you know, uh, listen to that content to, you know, um, read is the wrong word, uh, but, you know, consume the information on that page. Um, you know, we, we have to, to consider that. And that, that's going to be much more well aligned with the web as we know it today than any virtual layer that we put on top of it. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be important. Well, I would expect that even in 20 years, so you really can go to a virtual world and not be still so alive or waiting for the bathroom. I, I fully expect the plot to remain in the major form of media. If you think about hundreds of years ago, people invented a sculpture, and yet it didn't displace paintings. Right. right. But in more modern, I mean, have, TV was invented and right. it didn't displace radio, right? It's a new medium. Right. And so we're, we're in a space here which is. In some sense, this entire room is an experiment in alternate forms of presentation and relation. And yet, look at all of these plots on the wall, in the middle of the room. I think I expect VR to be a lot of it will be about creating a space for presentation as opposed to replacing what's in that space. Where that is placed in 3D space is like a totally yeah. separate question. Yeah, in 20 years, you will still read your a book, right? Yeah, you will yeah. be in your VR room reading a VR book, but it will be you will hold the book and read the book. Yeah, and Uber knows, even an older company than GeoCities, is, is already, it, you know, finance people love to have their 17 monitors in front of them. Uber takes one headset and maybe replaces this. Maybe they are on something, but you can, you can have a space with information and even conventional and very old information can be around you and make you feel better. Like, what, is, what happens if you try and get rid of the quad? And then you say, if I'm going to embed one, one web page in another, and my web page happens to be a tree, um, and it's going to have a transparent background, um, so there's not going to be a box around it. It's just going to be a tree. And then I embed this in the scene that I'm already in. What really makes it real is suddenly when it interacts with the environment. Maybe there's a standard physics communication channel, and suddenly this tree is going to be Exactly. Wind supported? Yes, no. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's, we've, we've talked about that. Like every hmm, the iPhone comes out. They introduce inertial scrolling. Inertial scrolling is a beautiful optimization of a classic convention for the medium and the capabilities of, of the medium, the touchscreen. Like, I can imagine future web clients competing based on who has the best default physics. So your declarative scene inherits a certain set of physics. And then it's, up to the, it's, some, it's some like combination of the developer's intent 
and the browser's built-in interpretation of that markup that defines what the user actually perceives, right? And then you can imagine people being like, oh my God, have you seen Chrome's new gravity model? It's amazing. <laughs> it makes like Opera's gravity model look like crap, you know? <laughs> I left Mozilla out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a whole level, another level of like content creators though that that does not pertain to. Like mm. people who are gonna make things on VR Tumblr, for example, mm. who's, you know, like they're gonna be making into a form and like what, I just think like, you know, what are the standard things that things like Twitter and Tumblr take right now? And what are the standard things that that thing is going to take when VR is a standard platform? I think they're really interesting. Like, it's going to be spherical video, and it's going to be like maybe two and a half D GIFs. And like, mm -hmm. that stuff like that, I think, too, will be like a huge engine of like how the web and especially the social web develops VR. What, uh, we keep talking about the grocery lineup. I've heard 10 years, and I, Brandon had like several years. This is a little bit off the web thing, but. Any bets as to when your Ray-Bans can do HoloLens slash Magic Leap style mixed reality at consumer prices? <laughs> <laughs> Just throw, throw names like, uh, I'm going to say 2018. What are you going to bet? I'm going to bet you <laughs> one pair of said glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I can expense this. <laughs> can you expense it in, in that many years, though? <laughs> <laughs> this whole gathering is just a boondoggle where we expense things and give them to each other. <laughs> I'll edit this part of the video out. 2021. 2021. 2027. Uh, wow, really? Yeah. Oh man, I don't, okay. It, it, isn't okay. that the year that uh, Rainbow's End was set in? Is it? I really? think so, 2027. Alright, Werner Vinci. So. <laughs> just any time post-singularity. Like, we're gonna get it, but it won't matter because we're Oh, God. <laughs> 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 right. But I'm guessing that's like 2015. 2015? Yeah. 15? Yeah. One five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this yeah, year? Yeah, we're all. Like any day now. Right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> 20, One of us. 2019. 20. I mean, if you've seen like the light field prototypes in yeah. the lab, they're already at that sunglasses form factor. You have transparent versions, so I don't think it's a hard road to see that coming down super fast mm -hmm. in the consumer space. 2019. That we said, Mike. Yeah. Me too. I think it's also like extremely variant on like how much like because there's like hardware, but there's like I think a lot of like what we forget is how important software is. Like at leap, like one of the one of the most difficult things is like oh, we solve this impressive. we solve this like really really difficult hardware problem, but then like it's like look this thing is amazing this really really works, but then you realize like oh crap we need to completely rethink every single interaction we've ever had. Right. And I think a lot of like when this stuff is ready is how the momentum continues. Because obviously if we keep this momentum up, like the entire companies are like, oh crap, we're gonna release a product like a year early just because it's so fast paced right now. And if, it, if we are able to maintain that momentum, like I think like 2017, 2018, like we're gonna have like really like things out there ready. But don't talk often, us into a VR bubble, sir. What? I said, don't talk us into a VR bubble. No, 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 no I'm just saying, that. Yeah, 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 but I'm just saying that like, like it, it depends on how cool the stuff we make is. If we can make stuff where it's like, crap, I really want this, and, and, and like, not only like, I really want this, but the person who's making decisions on where money goes is like, this is amazing. Like, like when you see somebody do like the childlike grin of like, oh, I get this, and like we continue to make sure that people get it, and we continue to make sure that like, when a consumer actually, like it arrives on the consumer side, it's like they actually get it, like then we can maintain momentum. But I think it, it like, like, like it's hard to decide on a trajectory when all we have is like this crazy asymptotic data set of like how much people care about VR right now. Like if we can keep on going like, yeah, to the moon. But I think that like, like, like one metaphor I really like is that like VR right now is like this rocket ship, it's taking off, it's going somewhere. We don't really know where, but it was like, dude, that rocket ship looks awesome. Like, I want to get on that rocket ship. I want to ride it there. And there's like a lot of people who are like selling tickets to like the destination that VR is going to. Like, like if it's going to Saturn, there's a lot of people being like, hey, we're going to Saturn. Like everybody hop on board. But there's not so many people who are like, this thing needs to like make it through the atmosphere. Like who is going to be the fuel for this ship? Not who is going to ride the ship to the destination, but who's going to like sacrifice themselves because there's going to be a lot more failed companies yeah. before we get to a place where we're like actually like chilling in the rings of Saturn. So I think a lot of the questions like how many more people are willing to like, like 
completely fuck themselves up and destroy their own personal life in order to make this thing happen. No one. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of dramatic. Not me, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just here for the ride. I'm just saying, who else is going to do it? We're not going to explode when we hit the bar. We're going to the bar. We're going to recycle ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was the Soviet dog that died in space? Like, Yasha or something like that? Leica. 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 So who's going to be the Leica and who's going to be the Yuri Gagarin? They're all in the circle. It happens. So, so, so <laughs> Josh, to, to throw my to throw my bet into the pool, I'm going to say, um, you know, ray bounds with VR are going to hit in 2018, I think, and then Apple will invent VR in 2019, <laughs> and everybody will care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see what Apple does. They don't. In, they, Press the button. 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 Um, what is the, all right, so the web's really awesome. It's, it's very vibrant. It's got a lot of really cool things about it. It can also be scary as shit, as we've seen in a lot of different ways in the last year. Like, what is the scary stuff you're worried about in web VR, and how do we mitigate it? Or how do we lead to a happy outcome, not a dystopian, scary web VR outcome? Weird things about VR is that it's kind of humanizing. So in the unscary side of things, that when you see a person in VR, they seem more like an actual real person. And I think that might actually mitigate some scariness. On the other hand, when there's people who still act like terrible people or who want those video games where they do terrible things to people who are actually realistic, that is somewhat concerning to me. I mean, I yeah, I think the part that scares me the most is... I have told this story before, but like we have been to meetups where people have watched our videos and then been at the meetup mm -hmm. with them with them and they're like, I have like been in a room with you. Mm -hmm. And while most of the time you feel like, oh that's totally fine, then things like gamergate happen mm -hmm. and you realize that that's not fine, and then people are gonna give you death heads on the internet because you made a video. Like that is just gonna cross over into VR in a way that kind of scares me because it's a really intimate Video. I'm like, I made a video of getting dressed in the morning in my closet on Friday, and then I realized, like, that's maybe I shouldn't have put that on. Right? <laughs> uh, whatever. The answer is that people feel even more like they know you, yeah. hmm. which is going to be really great in some ways, and kind of not in others. Hmm. Yeah, when you're someone's like fake VR girlfriend, it's going to be great because you're going to get paid really well. <laughs> <laughs> so, along those lines, um, something that I mean, we okay. started to think about a little bit of Mozilla, like maybe you can think about is the whole security aspect. Mm -hmm. So, I think you guys have been brick rolled in a browser. Imagine brick rolled in VR, right? Like, how do you not get brick rolled in VR? And how do you get yourself from phishing websites and uh, spammers and scammers and just all this stuff? I'm so excited to see just massive pop up windows just like making you more and more claustrophobic. Like, I don't want it yeah. in general, but just like to see that the first time. Yeah, but it's like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, like, snow crashed in VR because so many advertising pop-ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you just open my windy website and then the wind physics blows them all down. <laughs> <laughs> That's an add-on. That's the add-on. It's the wind add-on. There's, there's so many definitions of the internet, right? To a lot of the to a lot of people, the internet is Facebook and Facebook, right? To certain demographics. So so when we say what is a browser, it kind of goes back to that. And then so we can say what are the scary things? I can imagine there's going to be some incredibly scary things. You know, the uh, snuff video, snuff, you know, kind of craziness. I mean, IS is already, uh, the IS guys in Syria are already trying to do that, you know, trying to mm. bring, it, bring these weird experiences into the rest of our mental spaces, right? It's nasty. Mm. But that's really, the internet's still just going to be another tool, right? Just like fire. And there's going to be some nasty stuff. But there's also, I think, like every tool, hopefully there's going to be some good, really amazing ways that we can interact and understand each other. Your fears are going to understand you too well and it's going to be too creepy. But another way to understand what it feels like to be in a, in a Syrian refugee camp or, mm -hmm. or the slum in, in Manila or whatever, that's going to be really, really powerful to some and really triggering to others and you know one person gets PTSD after watching it and one yeah. person says this is something I now care about I'm going to go make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also think that like along with that like like just the humanizing factor of like seeing somebody else I don't know if Gamergate or those sorts of things would happen if those two people were in a room like 
making eye contact, being like, you're a human being and I'm a human being, mm -hmm. that's like a beautiful thing that we're both humans. Like, mm -hmm. there's a certain subset of like literally like like mentally unstable humans, which still terrifies me, but I really think that like when you can actually like connect person to person, like a lot of those dangers move away. But also like it creates a vulnerability, so there's like much more uh, possibility for really terrible stuff. There's also no economy of scale in that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah like yeah. if I'm gonna emotionally connect you person to person just because we're in VR, like that's my friend. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. like me as a performer cultivating yeah. an audience yeah. on the yeah. internet. Like that's yeah. a whole other thing that yeah. the intimacy is great for, but I'm also like, yeah. 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 Um, one fear well, it's not a fear actually, I have, but it's I think it's gonna be the we are gonna see the deepest generational gap ever in human history. So there's gonna be a generation that is gonna grow up in VR. And the real world, the physical world, is gonna feel like slow, boring, and limiting. And these people won't, they, 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 they are gonna avoid the physical world. He doesn't and agree. I, I, I don't agree so, 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 so fully with that. I can give you an example. When we have like perfect optics, and you can feel like have sex with a person, and feels the same way as the physical world. Better. But in VR, you can have sex whenever you want, with whatever person you want, with no effort. I mean, what would you go about? Yes, 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 yes. In VR, it literally gets as good as the physical world, which it won't, because like, holy shit, look at the right casting in this room. Like, it's not going to be good as physical world. Like, you think that you can like program a human connection with like another person who you're having sex with? I don't think that's possible. If I may, like a historical analogy yeah. there is, I'm a BlackBerry CTO. It's like 2007. I'm like, eh, software keyboard will never equal a hardware keyboard. There's a long, wonderful legacy of. Any, it's like software eats the world. Anything that can be digitized, the economy is eventually completely destroyed and annihilated and recreated. Yeah, but you're talking about the keyboard. No, software keyboard has not equaled the physical keyboard. If I could have my uh, touchscreen phone pop out a physical keyboard whenever I wanted, that would be great. But there, the kids don't care. There's, there's, yeah, yeah, there's a... But the, the trade-off, like the fact that you have like that it's convenient and you, you get more screen space and everything. But there is definitely a trade-off there. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's a trade-off to be made between VR and real life, I think that we're we're gonna be okay. I also, like that, that fear is really old. This is not the first time yeah. we've been making this argument. People made that argument about television. People make that argument about radio. People made that argument about reading. Like, people have been making the oh my god, we're never gonna come back to the real world, and it's gonna be so awesome, and we're never like it, it just isn't true. It's never been true as for the. You know, I want, I want to say thousand years, there, probably more than that. There's only generational true. gaps, right? Like when rock came out, it's like, this is not music, this is noise, or... You see what I mean? But this is much more profound. It's like det detaching ourselves from the physical world. Like it's giving you superpowers. You can fly. Wow. You, you, can, you can move things with your mind, right? And you're in the real world, and you cannot do any of that. Yeah, it's going to be boring. Um, there's going to be people who can't spend all day every day in VR, and it's just going to be entirely cut off from the people who can. Dead. So I don't think it's going to be like end of the world scenario, but I do think it's going to be a slightly bigger gap than mm -hmm. previous. I think that to me, the like the fear that you have is like almost like the biggest hope that I have. Like my my favorite like analogy of that is me me and my homie uh, like go around an elite danger.